Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Finna by Nino Sipri in which two minimum wage employees are forced to enter a wormhole to track down a customer who has gone missing in their department store. But first of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day on both fiction and nonfiction books. So if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to stick around. Back to our review of Finna. First of all, I want to talk about how I got to this book because this is actually book one in a series, but it is the second book I have read by Nino Sipri. So initially I read the book Defect by Nino Sipri, which is right here because I have not returned it to the library. And I do have the review of Defect on my channel. So I read this book and I really liked it. I just liked the worlds that the author built and I really enjoyed it. And I got to the end of the book and I was reading the author's notes in the back section and I realized that this was actually book two in a series, which to be fair, you do not need to have read book one to enjoy book two. Defect can be read on its own and the same goes for Finna. However, these two do occur in the same span of a couple days and they take place in the same universe, in the same department store, so they do go hand in hand together. After reading book two though and liking it, I decided to go find book one, which my library happened to have, and I decided to give it a read and see what I thought about book one one. So that is how we got to Finna and that is how I read these series backwards from two to one. I do not think it matters in which order you read them, both will complement each other perfectly. I think to sum up the plot of Finna, the best way to do it is probably just the second paragraph on the back which sums it up neatly when an elderly customer at a big box furniture store slips through a portal to another dimension, it's up to two minimum wage employees to track her across the multiverse and protect their company's bottom line. I was gotta take care of the bottom line. Multi-dimensional swashbuckling would be hard enough, but the, those two unfortunate souls broke up a week ago. So in this book, we are following the two employees, Ava and Jules. Ava and Jules work together at this store and in the process of working together, they wind up dating, but things do not go according to plan and they have recently broken up. They have changed around their work schedule and hopefully they're not going to run into each other anymore. However, Due to the events in the complimentary book two, which you do not need to know, an employee named Derek takes the day off and Ava is called in to cover Derek's shift at the department store, which is unfortunate because this is a shift Jules works. So now they are forced into close proximity. And on that day, a elderly customer, an elderly customer, I should say, goes missing. And their manager, Trisha, reveals that sometimes wormholes open up in the department store. You know, I just have to say that never happened when I worked at a department store, but it may have spiced up the job a little bit. So this the wormhole has opened up and they're looking for volunteers. Jules immediately volunteers to go into the wormhole. They've always been a little bit more adventurous, so that tracks. Ava does not want to go in, but she is the least senior person there, so she gets told, voluntold, let's say, to go that she'll be going into the wormhole or she can forfeit her job. So these two recent exes enter the wormhole together and go to track down this missing customer. So that is where the plot begins and that continues their adventures through the multiverse going through these different universes to track down the customer using a device called Finna, which is where the name comes from to find this missing customer is the plot of this story and the remaining rest of this book. It is quite a short book, so I don't want to go too far into the plot because at this point, I feel like I'm already 50 pages in out of a 130, around 130 page book. So it is again, quite short. I think the story is very, very promising. It sounds humorous. It sounds like an adventure. It sounds entertaining. You have two minimum wage employees working in a department store. I think a lot of people in their life have had that job where they're working in retail, a minimum wage department store job. And it's, you know, it's a vibe. There's a level of camaraderie you feel with your coworkers because you're kind of all in this situation together. You have the manager who's a little too corporate-y Everything feels very relatable in the story and we have this thing, the situation where you're put in close proximity with your ex, no one likes that, and that could be a funny situation as they have the sci-fi fantasy element of going through the multiverse. And I think, to the author Nino Sipri's credit, uh, you can tell there's a sense of humor there. You can tell things are funny, The there's one-liners that make you laugh, so the author clearly has a good sense of humor and there's a very promising storyline in this book. However, unlike Defect, I just never felt like I connected 
to the characters in Thinna. I feel like neither Ava nor Jules really popped out at me. I felt like I never connected with either one and I never really cared about cheering on any of them. The third character or the third character who's not really present physically for most of the book but is they are operating as a character is the missing customer who they are seeking in the wormholes in these multi multiverses and she is also a very interesting character she's probably the one I connected with most and I feel like their characters need that spark that makes the reader care about the characters for the reader to like them I felt like I was dropped in the middle of a messy, emotional, unhappy breakup and I had to read through it. And I feel like the breakup, the fact that things were kind of a little tense, that the fact that you were working with your ex, all these things didn't have to lead to characters that the reader didn't connect with, but in this case they did and I just felt like I didn't connect with the characters. I do not know if this is the author's first book. It may have been, I'm not sure, but I don't think, I think maybe the author just needed a little bit more practice or work. I'm not sure what because that problem didn't exist as much in Defect. I definitely felt connected to the characters. I wasn't disconnected. So I think that is an area where Defect is stronger than Finna. I do have to say the romance didn't annoy me as much because it was kind of central to the plot. The fact that they were exes in Finna as in Defect where this romance plot line was sort of started but I didn't really care about it at all. So I do have to say there are strengths and weaknesses between these two but overall I think defect was just better. If the characters didn't pop with me and we're spending so much of these 130 pages with these characters that I need to be connected to them to enjoy this book. Once the plot gets going, once they're into the multiverse and they're having to face the actual plot, the, the actions that's occurring, the plot gets much better in my opinion. Things kind of pick up, the story starts moving, that missing customer kind of becomes a character in and of herself even when she's not present with the characters and the story starts to move. So I do think that the story gets better when the plot gets going and the author just needed to maybe do a little bit more tweaking, maybe working a little bit more with an editor to make the first two characters a lot more relatable, at least in my opinion, or connectable. Not relatable, that's not the word I'm going for, but th that spark that makes you connect and want to cheer for both these characters were kind of lacking for the meme. I personally also would have liked the ending to be a little different. I think I would have liked I think the author did a good job keeping it kind of ambiguous on what would have happened next, although there's a direction implied. I think it would have been interesting if maybe the ending had been a little bit more vague and we didn't really know what was going to happen next. I feel like that was a totally fine situation. But overall, I think the characters were the weakest part of this book and that's what really made me feel less attached to this book overall. Overall though, I do think this character, or this character, <laughs> I don't know why I said character. This author does a really good job of world building. You can tell there's a sense of humor. There's a really good promising ability to build plot. So I would definitely read things by Nino Sipri in the future. I just thought that the characters in this one were a little weak. But obviously I've read two books by the author at this point. I've enjoyed the worlds in both of them. I've enjoyed the characters more in this one. I've enjoyed the romance subplot a little bit more in this one. So overall, I think this author has a promising future and I would read more books by Sipri in the future. If you've read anything by this author or have read these two books, please let me know what you thought about them in the comment section below. I love to receive that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.